Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph. Do you guys catch the uh, solar eclipse this week? Uh, we have a, a clip I want to show you guys from Probe A2 satellites that uh, got a little glimpse of the uh, of the uh, eclipse. They actually got it more than once uh, based on their orbital uh, trajectory. They were able to get it once through that kind of scope, and then once again later in the afternoon when it was passing more over the uh, uh, traditional areas in the central uh, standard time uh, areas of the United States. So definitely some interesting uh, 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 views and different things all the way uh, spanning across Mexico, Austin, Texas, and up the uh, eastern parts of the United States. So yeah, a lot of great stuff. Um, we got a little taste of it here in uh, Missoula for sure, just with the late, uh, with just just the little bottom part. So if we actually take a, l a quick look back at it, I'll give you kind of a an idea. Just kind of, kind of like from this perspective right here. But if you just kind of put the uh, the bottom it at the bottom of the uh, the sun, and yeah, it didn't really affect too much of the sunlight here in Missoula, uh, just because you need to be in a certain uh, totalitarian. Uh, percentage just to get it because I think uh, uh, back in the day Missoula was also one of the uh, I think it was 2017 when we had our last solar oh well we had it October we, that was a partial eclipse here in the United States as well but then of course the one that happened more a uh, lot closer uh, probably closer to Idaho but still we still got a 90 percent uh, uh, the the light in the uh, Missoula and Western Montana area was very much just like imagine if the whole world decided to put on sunglasses so that's that we're gonna jump right into some things that happened in the city council. Uh, here's my city council report. So kicking things off, rezoning in Montana on Montana and California streets. The right-of-way vacation will allow for four new housing units on a parcel and two additional existing single-family units. The total unit count plant would be six units under four sealable properties. These are more in line with the city utilizing some of these spaces that would be uh, for two units and a new regulation on zoning would allow for more infill. The city has spoken openly about uh, sparing as much of the land and the county as they can because of uh, preserving egg land for the future. Uh, I prefer not to show any of the clips from this particular meeting because it was about 38 minutes and there wasn't too much going on here because I have a lot more for the community meetings coming up as well. Um, I also wanted to mention that uh, Lolo Street Bridge, uh, for those of you who live up in the Rattlesnake who need to get across uh, the Rattlesnake, uh, that bridge uh, basically had a $2.9 million from the PROTECT grant from the U.S. Department of Transportation with thanks to uh, Senator John Tester for getting that through. Um, now we're going to jump right into climate conservation um, and parks committee meeting and the two items refer to the sculptures at the Silver Park just past McCormick and baseball field. The Northside Pedestrian Bridge is back as they tried to get this opened uh, by the end of July of this year. So David Selvage uh, from the uh, City of Missoula who's been working on this, the engineer, talks more about this additional $100,000 for this particular project as it gets more and more expensive. Uh. These expenses uh, cover a variety of challenges and concerns and are also uh, aimed at preparing for um, the reopening of the bridge. Um, the um, uh, costs uh, are dealing with um, uh, the uh, challenges with re uh, concrete reinforcing steel in the stem walls here. We had to replace some. We had to drill some in new here. This is just an example of what we were had to treat for. Um, the darker steel in here is new. Um, we're also looking to replace the interior handrails. Um, they are ex in really poor condition. Here's an example of what we're looking at. Uh, some of these panels could be kicked out really with very little force. And then of course, handrails or where you actually touch the structure. Um, and uh, those are basically security concerns. Yep, and that was uh, David Selvage uh, talking more about that. And overall the costs, we uh, we built the bridge over the railroad tracks that didn't last as long as they uh, uh, intended to. And so now we're having to deal with uh, the closure of the North Side Pedestrian Bridge, which resulted in the replacement of a lot of the foundation, which was cement versus concrete. Um, and that's the difference between those two is roughly uh, 
the lifespan of the um, the bridge based on the con the concrete versus the cement basically uh, halved the lifespan of it, um, and it was very uh, confusing when we were first talking about it because David Selvage was just like, "What what what's going on with this? Like, I, I didn't even know that the structure was cement. It should have been made with concrete, which should have made this thing last for 40 to 60 years." Is which the uh, intention plan will be moving forward when they plan to open this at the end of July. Bob Campbell, City Council, spoke about the raising costs, and David Selvage uh, talked about. Um, you know, some of the options and some of the money that's going towards this. We'll help this project meet the public's needs, addressing safety concerns. Um, they are above and beyond the base project or were found conditions that we think are, are necessary to address now because they will be, otherwise it will be, require another closure to handle like railings and painting and things like that. Um, these are all of these improvements will continue to provide for the maximum life cycle of the bridge. All right. So that was David Selvage talking about the justification of the additional funding towards this. And the building will advance and their aim for a July opening of the Northside Pedestrian Bridge has been closed for quite some time now. Uh, housing Redevelopment and Community Program spoke of the, about the CON plan. And so this has to do with a lot of those uh, grants that go through uh, block. Uh, home grants and CBDG grants. These are the ones that the cities have been utilizing to help encourage uh, more infill development, affordable housing, not to mention being able to utilize some of these grants to uh, infer, uh, basically build infrastructure out of this place as well. So Kendra Lysom, Community Development, uh, gave the presentation on where the money will be going towards through this con plan, and this is what she had to say. So in the process of developing the con plan, we arrived at three main goals that are seen here. Housing options, supporting vulnerable populations, and community services. Administration is required as a fourth goal, but this is just us managing our projects. Uh, the city will use these goals as a guide when reviewing and choosing projects to fund with CDBG and home dollars. And then, um, and from here, we'll want, we want to focus on the unified application process and the program year 2024 funding uh, recommendations. All right. And so that's just a little taste of that. And we get a little bit further into it as so much money goes towards this program uh, uh, as individuals would not feel the impact, but through these many programs in place, affordable housing becomes easier to access and HUD, housing and urban development, acts as the lightning rod for those grants in the first place. I mean, uh, easier, but not the immediate solution to these ongoing price hikes and that reflect affordable with those hikes as well. So uh, Colleen Kane with the community planning spoken about the trust fund and the average uh, home median income for people who are trying to live in Missoula. Our funds can go to benefit households of up to 120% area median income. Um, consumer housing service projects under the trust fund don't have an AMI limit. Um, so most of our funds must benefit households of certain incomes. Income limits are often referred to in terms of area median income. To explain area median income a little bit more, if you line up every household in a region from the one making the least to the one making the most, the household in the very middle would be the median household. Therefore, the area median income is the household income for the middle household in a region. Community development funds use area median income or AMI to determine eligibility for assistance. All right, and so you got a little taste of that. And you know, it's, it's one of the things they keep consistently talk about, you know, affordability, average costs, data. They, they're gonna be throwing this, uh, they've been throwing at this at, uh, for these meetings like constantly. And you know, this is an information that requires public meeting. And this is a process for coming up with a plan for the next five years, because it's just another one of those things that you have to have this available to the public and you have to make sure it's all above board. So uh, among these items, they want to put money towards uh, the listed um, homeward HRC ramp home funds, which include homeward in, uh, um, 
NMCDC, and then also United Way of Missoula through their House and Solution Fund. There's the Howell Street Acquisition, there's uh, Operating Assistance, uh, Firewood uh, Court Rehabilitation, Ramp Installations, um, Owner Occupied Rehabilitation, and Orchard Gardens Rehabilitation. And all of these uh, have various uh, ticket prices of the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, Eric LeBold, United Way of Missoula, talks about the impacts of this particular fund as they have taken a lot of the uh, money and benefited from this while providing the uh, temporary safe outdoor space within, in conjunction with the Sovereign Hope Rescue Mission. The cycles of grants don't often always align and uh, you know the sustainability of the program, the, the open and close of it is a, a, a concern. So the, the opportunity to have the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, uh, the pending opportunity I should say, that coupled with what is confirmed already by Wells Fargo, and then what is also pending, Auto Brimmer Trust Fund. Uh, we are applying for county um, community assistance funds. We also have private donations and, um, and past uh, funding from uh, healthcare facilities. Um, in total, right now, we are projecting out with the hopes to have somewhere around $300,000 when we do open. Okay, and so part of this is that uh, this, through these grants and the money that they're gonna be getting is, is $92,000, so it's definitely a pretty big drop in their bucket that they're trying to make up for the $300,000 that they're trying to get for this, for many of their services moving forward. Um, I would probably say longevity goes beyond simply creating buildings in Missoula that residents can afford to go to, but United Way has used their services to help foster the temporary safe outdoor space and creating multiple services to help people pay the rent and even to deposit to move into these through the centralized housing solution. However, even the TOS uh, site is doomed uh, by sunset by 2025, where there is no way to fund those services for those pallet homes that are just off of uh, Broadway. And so far, they've helped over 400 households since get, uh, get some of that pandemic funding. And uh, times and costs have gotten easier. It's just these federal safety net programs are sunsetting as a result of the pandemic being over. Um, on top of that uh, topic, Missoula neighborhoods will be awarded $17,000 worth of grants for improvements of various area neighborhoods looking up uh, update and look and feel of certain places. Examples include, you know, custom murals, bike racks, uh, various right away improvements for people wandering through the city of Missoula. Um, it's not much, but it's a little amount that it can improve neighborhoods, even if it's simply as painting a fence near uh, public right away. Public Works has a water main replacement. I'm not going to talk about that too much. And uh, some of the things that come out of this meeting was the uh, how they're going to deal with uh, up, um, essentially uh, sidewalks moving forward in the future. Because one of the things is that when they build sidewalks and uh, you know, a lot of the city really wants to build sidewalks. Like a lot of people in these smaller neighborhoods and kind of things are just like, oh, we're getting set with this bill of $9,000 that we have to pay over uh, the next uh, 10 to 20 years. Uh, to build the same amount of sidewalk per year, the additional funding towards sidewalks will require estimated 120, 150,000 a year. This will uh, prevent individual homeowners from having to pay up to $9,000 for sidewalk projects. Some say really good news for folks kind of stuck with the bill and those who have lived with, within special improvement districts, which kind of uh, sunset with the uh, addition of the Hillview way back uh, six, year, six plus years ago. And Jeremy Keen, Public Works and Mobility Director, spoke on this a little bit further in terms of what they've been doing. You just described that for an individual house, it's difficult to find a comp that shows that. But mm -hmm. when you look at neighborhoods, when you look at neighborhoods that have that, that walkable infrastructure that are walkable that, that you see a difference in property values so yep. it's on the whole it's it's the ability to connect to things by walking thank you for that clarification um, another quick question I had to um, is just about the burden of a lien on a homeowner I'm curious if there's been any conversation about how having a lien so say a homeowner does defer the nine thousand dollar payment and they have a lien on their home is there has there been any conversation about how that affects a homeowner because when you have a lien on your home it changes your ability to borrow um, for other possible options and i'm just curious if that's been taken into consideration when we talk about how a low-income homeowner can just get a lien instead of paying it and whether or not there's been any conversation about how buying a house with a lien on it actually affects its saleability because i, I guess what i'm saying is 
it's it's easy to say that the homeowner can just defer, but liens come with consequences to homeowners, and I'm wondering if that has been considered when we talk about just putting a lien on somebody's house and letting them pay it later. Yeah, I'm I'm no expert, but um, it is a promissory note. It is something that would have to be paid back when the house is sold, and so I assume that a bank would also look at that. So you have a you have essentially a second lien against this house that they have to consider. Yeah, yeah, liens on homes are a big deal. So I'm just I guess my point is is that it's not a simple solution to just tell homeowners to defer because it affects it affects saleability and it affects a homeowner's ability to borrow, um, especially against the equity of their home if they need it. And so. All right, so one of the bigger takeaways of this particular thing is that there are uh, solutions in place for people who can't outright pay for their sidewalks or come up with a, a payment plan, and so the city does it for them, which creates those called liens. And so because of these liens, uh, it's the idea that, oh, when you sell your house, then the, you have to pay the money, and they, uh, the idea is that they would take the money off of the uh, the sale price when you sell your house. So it's very interesting because as we get further into this, you know, Christian Jordan, who was just speaking to uh, Jeremy Keene from City Council, asked those questions. It's pretty interesting because many of these cases, sidewalks are a city priority, but in many neighborhoods, they feel uh, the impacts and those costs related to it are in Sudsbury. Our city attorney talks about those costs on homes, even if the current homeowner cannot pay outright. And this is what he had to say. Uh, with respect to liens affecting saleability, I, I I might uh, disagree the, the liens are taken care of as part of closing. So the buyer doesn't have any, it doesn't impact the buyer in any way. It, it might impact, you know, the, the owner and how much money they're going to get, or if they're able to sell it, if they aren't able to get enough money to buy another house or whatever they're thinking, if they've got $9,000 that it can be subtracted at closing. But it, I, I, I think I would disagree generally that a lien will affect the saleability of a house because it's taken care of at closing. All right. So yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely a lot of interesting things moving forward on this plan, but the ultimate goal is to find a better uh, solution as they're going to be putting this forward into the budget uh, by the end of May through August for final consideration of the fiscal year 2025 budget season, which, like I said before, they're looking into uh, putting this into like uh, rolling this into like a, a district uh, where they're going to try to put in 150000 a year for sidewalks. Um, and for more information on this and many of the meetings, you can go to the City of Missoula's website ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website for those looking to figure out what the city is doing, what they're up to, and all sorts of other meetings that are uh, available for you to watch at any time. Um, I also want to uh, throw back to Committee of the Whole from last week um, uh, because it was definitely one of the more eye-opening ones and it kind of talked about the uh, property taxes. And so Dan Buck, from a uh, former um, uh, uh, director of the Department of uh, uh, revenue for the state of Montana basically spoke at the idea that uh, the property taxes have gone up within the last year or so with the assessment by $267.7 million in property taxes for homes. Um, but uh, some places like mining companies and stuff like that, they've actually seen um, a diminishing um, uh, tax rate of 70 five seventy nine million dollars in reduction in their taxes and so there's been a very interesting kind of staggering thing and Dan Buck basically said that uh, the state of Montana and the Department of Revenue basically haven't been doing their job since 2017 which it's their job to assess value of properties not for companies to potentially undervalue their company moving forward so yeah it's interesting it's a lot of interesting things happening as well but I'm going to jump over to something a little more fun and friendly with uh, some of our clips and some of our short videos that we made through our spring camp during spring break with the kiddos. So without further ado, here's this, and when I come back, we're going to talk about some movies. Giant birds, the only giant bird 
is an eagle, literally. No, it's um, it was a human bird. Are you sure? Do they have two legs and two hands? Yes. Well, I still don't believe you. Birds are not related to humans in any way. The only bird I see is the bird Brian stands right in front of me. You didn't know what I'm doing. Let's get out of here. Okay. Whatever you say. Mm -hmm. Anyone but? I'm going to Maybe it's all the bird cheese you've been eating. Here are ba 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 bird ba 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 bird. Buddy. Hey, old buddy. Yeah. Uh, look at all those. Look at all those kids on your fancy old Teslas. Back in my day, I had to fight the Avengers just to get to school. Yeah. I found a dinosaur of Mount Everest. Then I loaded the bomb in. Down. Ten plunge, ten hundred times, and then I had to fight the Avengers. Then I had to win the WWE. Then I had to win tennis. Then I had to walk through and all that dumb Oh, I forgot to ask you how you were. Did I? You forgot. Oh. Well, how are you? I'm good right now. Hey, wanna hear a joke? Yeah, sure. Not hell. Ha 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 ha. Get off my lawn, you hippies! All taxpayers pay for these parts! Yeah, yeah. It's the fastest I can run. Huh. Faster than me? Really? Oh my god. I'm coming. I'm coming. Bud. Oh, glad to see you again. Wait, oh. He's dead. After 30 minutes of being captured, I am free to conquer MCAT! <laughs> The Pogwitch has escaped. We need young filmmakers with attitude. Meow, 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 meow. Okay, okay. Fuck, 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 fuck,
All right, we are finally back. We're going to talk about some movies. Um, honestly, uh, we've had such a great uh, uh, kids camp type stuff. I mean, a lot of our camps, there's still some open spots available, but they're filling up fast, like faster than we've uh, ever seen them happen. So if you want to sign your kid up, uh, uh, demographic is roughly 8 to 14. Uh, if they're interested in doing uh, various camps, we have a documentary camp, we got a horror camp, we have a uh, animation camp that are still open. If anyone wants to sign up, you just have to sign up through MCAT.org. All right, we're going to jump right in to some new movies that are coming out this week. And kicking things off is the movie that will, <coughs> that are capitalizing on our divided nation. It's, you know, called Civil War. So they're just like, oh, we've been more divided than the last couple years. And they're just like, hey, let's capitalize and make a movie about a Civil War. We're showing off the evil fantasies of artists with this one as we take the time we live in and be like, hey, let's just do a Civil War. This movie has a series of actors and actresses you recognize from various major movies and shows over the years, like Christian Dunst to her husband, Jesse Plemons, in a story about a bunch of reporters cross-country journey across America where they want to exploit the uh, citizens for uh, journalistic um, What's that? Uh, journalistic um, <coughs> prestige. Enjoy a movie that has created such a stir online that the idea that something like this could happen has moviegoers intrigued, like after the Purge movies, which is meant for a select few of people, in which they'll probably bury this with a whole bunch of sequels along the way. Um, then we got uh, Arcadian. Uh, Nicolas Cage and his uh, wig star in this film about a post apocalyptic end of the world where a dad and his twin sons have to fend off bandits and other post-apocalyptic obstacles while defending their farm. So roughly the whole story is like you have the bulk of the end of the world but they're gonna kind of do it like a single location kind of shoot in which they just be like hey we're just gonna run down farm barn whatever and just say it's the end of the world and not really show it. Uh, maybe we have an explosion somewhere maybe we just have like a, a matte painting of like a Giant, giant hole in the ground where a city used to be. Boom, you got a horror, horror show. But I assume Nicolas Cage will make a, this ultimate sacrifice for his boys and go off to make plenty of sequels just like they did with A Quiet Place. Then we're going to jump right into Sting. And yes, this is a uh, spider movie that grows too big and out of control. Nothing like a movie about a monster that starts off cute and slowly gets out of control. This movie is a horror movie about a giant spider raised by that weird little girl you knew in middle school only for the creature to get too big to handle and starts feasting on the residents and the family of her uh, neighborhood. I like movies that are set during the winter and from what I saw in the trailer, this is happening in the middle of winter. Maybe she wanted a pet for Christmas, didn't get one, and then she got one. Um, but you know, this is one of those kind of movies where just like, Cujo kind of ruined the trend of movies where just like, oh, this seems innocently enough and then it ends up being just like a mega giant, uh, giant movie spider. And, only the girl can save her baby um, sister or brother. <coughs> you know, whatever. It's a baby. Um, <laughs> uh, then we got a remake. Yet again, uh, this is going to be going to streaming services. It's called Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. In the vein of someone who grew up on these kind of movies with Elizabeth Shue, people like me want to uh, recreate nostalgia from an overbearing babysitter who actually cares not to let your kids have too much screen time. Anyways, this movie starts off with your typical cast with irresponsible teens that cannot raise uh, their younger siblings and they enlist a geriatric old lady who dies within the first day leaving the kids to their own devices. This uh, was a once a guilty pleasure amongst kids in the 90s because oh kids kidnap their parents or kids throw their kids and their parents in a dungeon or kids kill their parents. I don't know sometimes it goes a little bit too far in some of those things but just so they can actually live with a certain level of immaturity to realize the error of their ways and become better uh, people from it but at the same time it's a it's a mixture of like uh, of the two schools of thought it's like you know if you uh, enable the kids not to do anything they won't grow as individuals versus they might kill themselves <laughs> so that's essentially the two schools of thoughts of when, it, when raising kids in general but Without uh, further ado, uh, we have a new dub and stuff for you guys from the 1948 film, uh, Walk a Crooked Mile, uh, colorized through the Ted Turner Company. So without further ado, here is uh, Walk a Crooked Mile. Yeah, so you see the building? Let me see it again. Mmm, 
Yeah, it's too cartoony. Let me check again. Nope. Oh, maybe. I swear, I swear there's a cheesecake factory around here somewhere. Let's go find out. Well, I know they say that the sky is blue because it reflect, reflects the ocean and the way that the sun goes to the prism, but what does it actually mean? Well, thinking about those kids going downhill. Gravity doesn't make sense in San Francisco. Ah, this town's really gone to hell. Thanks, One Chain. One Chain! Well, how's the search for the Cheesecake Factory going? Yeah, ever since this city banned the Cheesecake Factory because it was, what, too fatty? Too sugary? It was a breeding ground for criminals, sir. Yeah, but my big fat wife had to get her foot amputated. Well, that's what you get for uh, being a chubby chaser. Yeah, so rumor has it this guy is trying to draw up a new Cheesecake Factory restaurant plans. Ugh, that guy's a real sick bastard, I tell you what. Well, I don't know what's sicker, sir. Ignoring the warning signs for a uh, overweight woman? Does this have anything to do with the case? Well, you know, it's just, I feel like it's a waste of resources to, uh... Yeah, you know, it always starts with one cheesecake factory, but then BAM! Everyone has the, the diabetes. diabetes, I mean, no. Before we get too into it, sir, there's something you should know. This guy's been acting very funny painting all these buildings. Huh, so you're saying that this is some kind of a, uh... I think what they're trying to say is that it's some kind of land grab. Perhaps maybe, like, some kind of, like... Mortgage scam of some kind. Oh, what what in fact are you implying, sir? Uh, why don't you tell him spots? Well, as far as I know, Churchill can make a whole entire painting in a day and still run a whole entire country. I want to tell him. Oh, can I get a cheeseburger? Cheeseburger and a tail. I'm on it. Look busy, used mugs. What can I say? San Francisco. The dirty diamond. Walking down these streets, I know more than I let on to believe that I know what I'm supposed to be not thinking about nothing. But I know for sure that I'm supposed to tail this guy. Or am I supposed to buy him a hamburger? I'm not sure. What's with all these people? Get out of the way! Move! Shoot! Get out of here! Oh, some kind of accident? Whoops, my bad. Alright, now let's go check out some things. Hey kid, what's up? Alright. Excuse me. Come on. I think I might get some food to eat. Mmm, oxtail. Mmm, that's what he wanted, right? Yeah, part of me wanted uh, just to kind of show the constant walking around in the whole entire city with just um, mind-numbing um, monologuing throughout the whole entire thing but here we are we're jumping right in we're gonna go right back to some events that are happening in the city of Missoula and as spring clean uh, kicks off Paul uh, St. Paul Lutheran Church is also doing a rummage sale going on right now until the afternoon you guys can check that out at St. Paul Lutheran Church they're doing a rummage sale so uh, spring cleaning all that kind of stuff uh, for those of you who are getting geared up for the uh, river rafting season uh, if you want to get certified they're doing a guide school uh, through the Montana River Guides uh, it's it's four hundred dollars but it is to get certified uh, for you to do that and also they do a swift water rescue class at 9 a.m. as well for more uh, competent and being able to take a crew down the river and be able to help people in need uh, while they are taking on Mother Nature's Rivers. Sourdough Baking 101 Lifelong Learning Center, many classes through this school off 3rd Street, plenty of adult education classes, uh, Stroller Strides, Mommy and Me Workout class, they do this every single Friday at 9.30 a.m. They do it so much I don't talk about it too much, so I just, uh, just some of those things that if a young mom wants to go out there, do some workout and kind of have their kids with other kids, it's a great opportunity as well. Missoula Butterfly House and Sectarium, they have their open hours at 10 a.m. with a uh, butterfly release most days at 10.30 a.m. with a predator feeding sometimes in the afternoons. You want to check out listings for those moving forward, MissoulaButterflyHouse.org. Um, Missoula Food Bank Meal Distribution, they also have a uh, their own power place at there, which is a park community center, reading library, science center, all that kind of stuff. So you get a little taste of the library over the Missoula Food Bank and get some of that meal distribution. Tiny Tales, as always, on Fridays at 10.30 a.m., uh, guided lessons with uh, reading, they might have some arts and crafts there uh, as well in the Imaginarium or Art Box, unless otherwise specified. Uh, lunch at the Missoula Senior Center. Uh, this is uh, their ongoing thing that happens every single day during the weekday, along with the Pavarel Center that does it every single day with morning, uh, lunchtime, and evening um, dinners. 
just a great opportunity for people to get some uh, food uh, when they're in need. Um, also, uh, Fridays they have yarns at Missoula Public Library. They also have watercolor most of the days. Um, from what I've been hearing from Robert, uh, he's he got his uh, uh, hours cut a little bit more for the watercolor classes, but they do have a consistent schedule for people who uh, are taking on the uh, the, the weekly uh, event. Um, so they're still be doing that um, 12 noon most days on Fridays. So. Lego Club and after school meals. Uh, this is a great way for the uh, library as they're going into the summer season. Summer season where they're gonna be planning on doing more lunches for uh, kids 18 and younger, where they have free lunches provided for the, during, uh, every day during the weekday um, while when the summer kicks off in June after school is let out. So Lego Club and after school meals, this is a great way for uh, parents to get some food with their kids and after their kids are done playing with Legos. Um, and then we get further into the uh, uh, late night stuff and we're going to kick things off with Tony Jensen. Uh, they're a distinguished visiting Native American writer and MAM is honored to host the uh, author Tony Jensen for reading in collaboration with the University of Montana's Creative Writing Program. This event is, uh, starts at 6 p.m. with doors open at 5 p.m. The James and Louis uh, Welsh Distinguished Visiting Native American Writer at UM Teaching Appointment was established in 2022 by James and Louis, uh, Louis Welch. Um, uh, through their endowment. Um, then we got Indigenous made a pop-up market at the Zach at 7 uh, 5.30 p.m. You can buy some Indigenous art, uh, market, all sorts of cool things there at the Zootown Arts Community Center starting at 5.30 p.m. tonight. Uh, Hot Shots Bingo Night. Uh, this is a part of their uh, raise money for the little basketball players. This Hot Shots uh, 9U, get ready for the shout bingo with win fantastic prizes in person. This is going to be night filled with fun, laughter, and of course, the healthy competition, mark your calendars, and lucky charms. Uh, Hot Shots Bingo Night is going to be a night to remember, uh, and yeah, so that's going to be happening tonight as well, this Hot Shots Bingo Night. You can look up more information by going to MissoulaEvents.net. Along with that, we got some bands happening at Imagination Brewing Company, playing some rock music, uh, Russell P uh, Perry, uh, and then Elks Lodge is going to do the Folklore Society, they do this every week. Beats uh, Antique uh, Sound System at the Wilma, so the Wilma is doing some electronic music starting at 7 p.m. John Floridis is going to be at the Old Post at 7 p.m. He is a great independent um, jam band kind of guy, solo acoustic music. Uh, Mask Cure, uh, Queer Aid, uh, Black Tie Affair, Adult Night, this is Queer Prom for Montana, is an unforgettable evening for Mask Queer Aid. Uh, Black Tie happening on February tonight at 7 p.m. at the Missoula County Gar uh, um, Fairgrounds. They're also doing it tomorrow night to embrace the vibrant spirit of celebration and inclusivity. This in-person event promises to be a night filled with dance, entertainment, and connections. And then we got ZDK Arts Presents Songs for a New World. This is going to be the Showtime Performing Arts Center. This is a new one off of 2500 Murphy Street. You can find out more information, like I said, at um, MissoulaEvents.net. This is a two-night show that mixes musical and concert elements. We also have a comedy show at the Zootown Arts Community Center started at 7.30 p.m. with Indigenous Comedy Night for All Nations Health Center. And uh, Jordan Smith is going to be Cranky Hands, Cranky Sam Public House playing some acoustic music at 8 p.m. And then as we're getting into our Saturday, we get still have the uh, Valley Winter Market at the Southgate Mall. Orchard Homes does theirs at starting at 10 a.m. But uh, I want to also give a shout out as the uh, Farmers Market is getting closer and closer with their kickoff for Saturday, May 4th. You want to check that out as well. Um, Missoula Public Library uh, moved their story time from Fridays to Saturdays. They used to do it both days, but now they just do it on Saturday at 10.30 a.m. at the Missoula Public Library inside the second floor at the Medjinarium. Um, Saturday free multi-aging workshop, Human Slash Nature, Missoula Art Museum. This is a free event from uh, 11 to 12.30 p.m. This is all skill, uh, skill uh, levels are welcome. If you have a kid under a certain age, you have to have it with a uh, whether they have to be with a parent, a chaperone, uh, just bring an open mind. Join professional artist Patricia Garcia in a workshop focused on the exhibit Terry Carson, Human Slash Nature. And so this is going to be a guided art um, class workshop for people who want to do that. Um, McCormick Park is hosting uh, Roll in Read. It's the third annual uh, for uh, zero to eight year olds. Families are welcome to stroll from one reading station to the next to hear stories read by firefighters, the sheriff office, and more. Even Smokey the Bear will be there. After reading, hearing some of the stories, meet a princess, check out the fire truck and mountain line buses, and have a snack. Your child can even take home a free book while supplies last. Then, as always, MCAT does our Saturday drop-ins at 1 p.m. This is from 1 to 3 p.m. Kids get to basically workshop and do some stop animation. Great way for getting their teeth cut in uh, video editing and more. Saturday kids activity, Missoula Rocks. They're going to be learning about rocks at the Montana Natural History Center starting at 1 p.m. These are uh, one of the many other great events that are happening that also coincides with our event here at MCAT. 
predator feeding at the Butterfly House. This is at 3.30 p.m. Um, they do it most Saturdays at 3.30 p.m. Uh, Mass Curate, like I said, it's going to be night two uh, for the uh, Queer Prom starting at 7 p.m. Way down north at Draftworks uh, is going to be some multi-genre music playing at Draftworks. Brewing starting at 7 p.m. Zach is going to be hosting the Wig Snatching uh, Rumble Royale. So imagine a drag show, but the uh, with wrestling lean rules and the whole idea is like the last one standing with their wig intact will get a $10,000 grand prize. It's Going to be pretty uh, intense, especially with the $10,000 prize. That's ridiculous. Um, Dueling Pianos with Josh Farmer and uh, Kyle Curtis at Stave and Hoop at tonight at 8 p.m. Karaoke at Westside Lanes, 9 p.m. And uh, Chris Moon will be doing the Badlander every Saturday at 10 p.m. with Spruce Alley Sally at the Top Hat playing some swing and bluegrass starting at 10, 15 p.m. Uh, Sunday, we're going to jump right in. We got a uh, breast brunch, uh, uh, Kappa Epsilon, a professional pharmacy fraternity um, in uh, raising donations for local breast and ovarian cancer research in Montana. They're going to be the doing at the University of Montana uh, from the Skaggs Building 169 on campus um, from 10 a.m. to uh, 12 p.m. And it is a, a free breakfast burritos and juice bar. And they're also doing a grand opening at Giving Art to Missoula. They're calling this the GAM. Um, it's going to be at 801 Sherwood Street, Suite 125. Arts Missoula to grand opening is new artist collective in Missoula located in the uh, Sintera, Sin, uh, Saratana Healing Arts Building. They accept new and gently used art crafts and hobby supplies as donations and hold a space called Free Art Materials Room to give them to the communities. They'll feature fam rooms, snacks, and local vendors for the opening. Beehive Health Workshop, the Missoula Urban Demonstration Project, learn how the life cycle of honeybeans and what is going on with the hive. Uh, so this is an intensive workshop that they do through the mud. This is 1527 Wyoming Street, uh, Missoula Urban De Demonstration Project, otherwise known as MUD. It's going to be at noon on Sunday. It's, uh, $10, uh, it's $10 for if you're a member or $20 if you're not a member. Um, creator Swap and Sale is also happening at the, around the same time. So once you're done with the lesson, you can also go to the Swap and Sale. Uh, share what you're not using at the home resource and find supplies for new hobby or creative business ventures while you're at it. Montana Governor's Conference on Tourism. The Hilton Garden Inn is going to be lead industry in Montana. It's more than just leisure, it's opportunity. Set your accordance to Missoula to celebrate half a century of lights, camera, and destinations. This event will feature a variety of sessions that will expand the challenge, our thinking, provide a direction for future, and supply us with new tools to promote development, our markets, and services. Food Forest 101 Permaculture Workshop. This is part of their Nine Mile Valley workshops. They get to learn and increase your food security while meeting others to build uh, mutual support and the journey of this four hour on site interactive workshop. So that's going to kick off on Sunday at 1 p.m. Then we got Poets for Change. If you are a little bit uh, uh, looking for a nice tap of spoken word, slam poetry kind of stuff, these are three minute performances, high energy voices. They highlight the international natural poets who in passion voices have been a vehicle for change, calling for end of war, oppression, and the need, th basically, uh, yeah, this is gonna be happening at 6 p.m. at uh, Uplift and Uprising. Uh, so yeah, this is gonna be an interesting kind of thing. You can look up more information by MissoulaEvents.net. You got Pale People, pl plus the Naked Limbs, Arrow Leaf. Zootown Arts Community Center is be hosting some rock music on Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Very funny weekend comedy open mic at the VFW that it is every Sunday at 8 p.m. And then you got finally got some karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon wrapping up your Sunday and weekend uh, events and more. So I'm going to jump right in to a little bit of news items because I have some things to talk about as well. Not too much, but uh, this week, as Native Americans in Montana have high statistics of going missing, the University of Montana has created a database for those missing by connecting unknown deaths to folks who went missing. This was part of, uh, was only the 2010s when the state of Montana began taking in murdered and missing indigenous people seriously by putting money and aid with tribal police to help to expand searches. This registry is something that will be em uh, emphasized those missing through DNA to help identify those who have been reported missing. Uh, the unfortunate nature of this is that they try to make register through doing DNA and one of the things is that uh, they were uh, using testing to figure out um, um, diabetes like in Arizona but it turned out they're looking at mental illness which resulted in a lot of mistrust for uh, a lot of tribes to uh, willingly give out DNA to white um, you know the settlers um, 
doctors and everything like that. And so using DNA analysis, basically this whole uh, system is made by a university student who is native, who wants to uh, bring this into the forefront and many uh, tribes oppose DNA analysis because of that. This came at a head in 1990s, like I said, in the Arizona gave blood to help combat high numbers of diabetes, only to find out their blood was being used for schizophrenic research. The lawsuit and national attention made it harder for trust between nations. The indigenous people are considered sovereign nations and have ability to self-determination with many of their rights eroded over the years. These are issued uh, that impact greater communities, but overall lack of resources resulted in many of these cases being unsolved. Um, an, uh, another announcement lately is the city of Missoula Island of the Y, just west of Missoula around the airport. Uh, the Y, as it's called, is a light industrial district where places such as Coca-Cola plant, Pepsi, new Amazon facilities are in the area where uh, up to 15,000 homes are slated for the next 50 years, creating a whole new neighborhood, potentially even a city. Uh, the cost of this water system is included with estimated between 130 million to 150 million dollars, including storage, pumps, mains, and truck lines. So there's a, there's a whole overhaul in this particular area, and they're utilizing the workforce housing grants to help build this, so it's a big, uh, big chunk of the infrastructure, build back better, Biden's thing, and just to kind of build on this as well. And so the lots will include about eight to 12 units per acre, which would uh, potentially create uh, 30,000 additional people impacting the city of Missoula. County planners believe the largest opportunities for housing development in the area include 700 acres west of Deshaw Lane and several uh, hundred acres north of Interstate 90 at Butler Creek. The uh, creek bottom would preserve for agriculture. Speaking of buildings, some of the industry uh, closes and in, in many cases they become a Superfund site which are registered and managed through the EPA and one place in Columbia Falls is looking for some progress of their former aluminum plant. Founded in 1955, the Columbia, uh, the Columbia Falls Aluminum Company was used in a post-World War II demand for metals which Montana during the time of war went above and beyond quotas for the war effort, making it four times more than they were asked of. Um, times changed, the demand waned for until 15 years ago when the company stopped completely. Montana has come up with uh, grassroots uh, demands for the EPA or Montana Department of Environmental Quality to live up to Montana's standards for a clean and livable climate. And part of this, before I start going way too fast for you, was the idea that they wanted to build housing on some of these former Superfund sites. But there are Superfund sites which they're unclean, and so they want to make sure that they can do this. And so. According to the Montana Free Press, an estimated 1.2 million cubic yards of contaminated soil are focused on 200 acres near the plant's former landfill where uh, waste from the aluminum smelting process was disposed of. And since it was designated as a Superfund site, the EPA has been working with the uh, Glencore to find the best path forward. In 2023, it released a primary, uh, preliminary plan that called for leaving most of the waste in place and surrounding it with slurry wall. The cost to actually remove some of the tainted soil would be anywhere between 624 million to 1.4 billion dollars for moving using over 60,000 truckloads. Coalition for Clean, uh, CFAC, said that the uh, materials can be moved safely and that the cost which would be covered by the owners uh, Glencore and not the taxpayers. So part of this too is the creation of housing and utilizing land rather than leaving up to a Superfund site. And as we get closer to the summer, summer months as well, Log Jam Presents out of Bonner will be hosting up to 40 shows at the Kettle House Amphitheater, uh, with, which also includes their first matinee, which will be featuring Vampire Weekend. Um, in the meeting at Bonner Community Council, uh, reps from Log Jam Presents came to tell the community about their plans on putting on more shows this year than in the past years, with an opening uh, for vendors to submit for catering. So they're always looking for people to help sell food there. Uh, they're gonna con continue selling their uh, own food there. Uh, apparently they have truffle, fly, uh, truffle fries that are uh, much to, uh, uh, to die for, uh, from what I heard. Uh, a band I haven't heard from since college, Vampire Weekend, the band known for pop rock and will perform at the Kittles Amphitheater two days, and one of them being in the afternoon. Uh, Big Sky Brewing Company was one of the first places in Missoula to kind of not, well, it w well, be more of those kind of like brewery kind of places that host bands at their breweries and they'll uh, be competing with Log Jam, Kettle House Presents this summer as well. Uh, always uh, got to give a shout out to local breweries who put on many shows and brew fests in Missoula, which are vast as the summer season is coming up. Back to Missoula, our Homeless neighbors have been a strain on our economy, according to Montana Free Press, which went into detail about the report states that the cost of homelessness in the community are not uh, evenly distributed and are highest for the people who experience homelessness 
and the people and places closest to them. Studies estimated costs of homelessness in the government and healthcare system typically find communities spend an average just seven to ten thousand dollars per unhoused person per year. Reports say a small a proportion of population is reasonable for a large percentage of the cost. So if you look at uh, have these folks get a job and a place to live, they would contribute to the tax burden we're all facing because they operate on a loss. And if they make roughly 12 to $15 an hour at those low level jobs and high demand, you can get uh, anywhere between $25,000 to $32,000 a year in wages that can go towards rent income taxes, making individuals value in the community go up. However, once persons are out in the street, those costs become more and more on the community. They cannot simply ignore the trash that gets built up over time, which results in Missoula spending hundreds of thousands of dollars for cleanup costs. Uh, a 2016 HRDC reports that the Gallatin County spent $28,300 annually per homeless super a super utilizer on healthcare, social services, and law enforcement, with healthcare making up the majority of those costs. One of the biggest issues is lack of financial and mental health support for these services providers, which can get flack from uh, then thanks from the clients who may or may not have mental health issues related to or from addictions. Um, the word uh, secondhand trauma has been thrown around in these articles because many of the strains of the workers who are trying to help these folks but fail to come through for some folks who might not be able to show up to get help when called upon. So it was very much an argument from uh, winter shelters where communities would spend medical intervention related to hypothermia and other related whether related incidents that require medical intervention. It's a very important for residents to know that even if they cannot help or don't want to pay, doing nothing has resulted in many of these rising costs for cleanups, communities, and services through police and first responders. Uh, living in the streets is a hard life and many of these have hard enough time getting their documents in place uh, for social security to birth certificates which are required to getting a job and it doesn't even help when they have no uh, address since in the past they have been a non-starter for a lot of people with jobs but employees are desperate for workers and I have heard that they have uh, um, been able to go through some of the gaps and as long as people can uh, fill out the paperwork and form and show up for work they're perfectly fine to get these jobs so there's definitely a demand for jobs in Missoula and you know um, and you know like if we're talking about some of these low minimum wage jobs you know California has updated the minimum wage to make the fast food industry pay employees $20 an hour. This includes uh, places that are large chain like McDonald's. Lots of these businesses tend to skew towards paying more for less workers. So instead of having multiple employees at a cheaper rate, we have specialized workers getting paid more, but doing even more as a result. So imagine getting a raise that increases your worth by 25% only for you to potentially double or triple your duties. It doesn't necessarily sound right, but they can always funnel new employees until they get the cog that works long enough to get replaced and these kind of jobs are expected short term. Business Decider reports that the restaurants also have promised to update their wages to compete with the chain restaurants, which took major hit during the pandemic. And I can tell you for certain is that sometimes these chain restaurants, uh, these chain restaurants or chain fast food restaurants uh, totally beat out uh, some of these mom and pop shops that are just like, oh, well, if you want to make more money, go to McDonald's. It's like, yeah, they will and they do. And your company can barely hold on to employees if you don't pay them enough and you can't make enough to pay enough. And that's why a lot of these uh, small time businesses fail. Competition to match these uh, fast food wages will increase cost of food and more as we keep pushing for higher wages without dealing with the realities of cost of services that don't support local businesses. It's kind of like shrinkflation 101 when you pay better, sure, but you can't expect to make more money unless you have a larger network. And even then we have places like McDonald's creating spinoff businesses like Cosmics, which is very much like your typical cafes with fast food included. Um, you know, you, have, you do have to give it to Starbucks. They kind of open the door for these little cute little cafes to take root, which why even Missoula and across the state, we have places like Florence Coffee really expanded over the years. It's like they take the model of fast food, but then they just implement it in local businesses. So it doesn't really feel like fast food, even though it kind of, it, it basically is. They took it from the playbook, but it's just like, oh, we're, we, we uh, put a different uh, painting or logo and everything, and so you don't feel guilty about coming here. And so it, it's weird. Missoula is kind of weird like that because I always know that some people like avoid fast food like the plague, but then they go to like places like Florence Coffee. It's like it's kind of fast food in, in, in a way. It's like I don't know what to tell you. But before I wrap up, I wanted to also mention that O.J. Simpson died the other day at the age of 76, leaving a controversial legacy from his sports run and raising celebrity before Nicole Brown Simpson and uh, Ronald Goldman were stabbed to death in June 
12, 1994. The court case would go to be on one of the most publicized trials in history, give rise to uh, reality shows in the late 90s and early 2000s. It's a weird time followed by even weirder times as curbing public opinion around serious subject matters to lean into the emotional nature of people while ignoring the many facts. And it kind of reminds me how television has uh, become a play where people can find what they want to hear rather than what they need to hear. And from that, I'm thankful for a show that I have here on MCAT. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Take care.